So, inclusivity. If you want to make the world more inclusive, you have to start thinking as if you're a minority. A few days ago, a week ago or so, I contacted a university department because I was told about some reorganization that was going on, something that autistic people especially wouldn't be very happy with. And I realized that these people have absolutely no idea that a lot of artistic people have absolutely no idea that they're artistic. They also have absolutely no idea what it is like to be artistic. I have discovered in the past few years that I've known two people who are artistic for four decades, one since 1982 and one since 1984. I had no clue. I had had some questions about these people, but my idea was, well, everyone has quirks. Those questions, those quirks, had to do with autism. I know that now. I've also seen what masking is like now, in the meantime. Anyway, if you want to figure out what it is like, then picture this. Every morning when you get into work, you have to ask for a chair, because you're not in a wheelchair. And every time you want to turn on the lights, the bright lights, you have to ask for permission because you are not autistic and if you're autistic, bright lights may bother you. Not every autistic person is the same. So just imagine this, that you have to ask for everything, put in a request for everything. Go around walking with this big label on your forehead, I'm autistic, because the wheelchair is pretty obvious go ask for every little thing that you need. Would you do that? Would you ask to be let into your office? Would you ask to have your own desk? Would you go ask permission to switch on the lights? Would you ask for permission or ask for a chair because you're not in a wheelchair? Because people who are in a wheelchair don't need a chair. Just think about that a little bit. A lot of these so-called impairments are actually hindrances created by society or hindrances that are made much worse by society.